Hey friend, David here. I want to finish out kind of this video on this wedge, at least for now, um, until we build a bunch of them for the church, um, and just kind of give you the lowdown of how this finished up, because I just realized that the last video I made in like October, um, I never completed, and that's due to a few things. One, um, things got busy, right? You got the holidays. Oh yeah, we had a baby, I built an office, all that jazz. Um, and so, you know, this being a hobby and being a side thing, um, it fell to the wayside. So, when I left you guys, we had laid out a crossover like this, and we'd actually built it, which means actually soldering these things together instead of just looking at them twisted around each other. And um, I just want to go through some photos here. I built this wedge, didn't leave the pad of paper in there. Put the baffle in, mounted the driver in, gave it a listen. Um, first reactions to it were, wow, you know, just like Michael had said with his Osprey 2 uh, on the Michael Chua's website, Amp Lab, like, this speaker sounds really good. I mean, this is an $80 woofer from Eminence and a $50 tweeter from Selenium. Like, that's not something you would consider to be like hi-fi equipment or even like that great in the pro audio realm. But this thing sounds good. So I went ahead, I um, tested it, added some feet to it, painted it with Duratex, and got it finished with some speak on jacks. Then I tried it out at the church. And that was actually a pretty big deal. Just bringing it to church, giving it a try on stage. And the initial reaction, um, the first week I actually had it up, we had our old worship leader back um, because he had gone to be a touring musician. And that's great for him. Um, and we had him back. He was leading. And um, and he really liked it, basically. Um, he was just complimenting how good the monitors sounded. And I was like, hey, you know, I think it's actually in the wedge because the monitors we have are pretty terrible previous to this. And so um, regardless, after that, a couple weeks after that, um, I connected with a friend who's an audio engineer and he came over and we measured the thing. Uh, we took a lot of measurements to see, um, okay, how does this really perform on paper? And I also, before I brought it back to the church to do, um, more of the, um, you know, to put it in front of people more, I just wanted to go, Hey, you know, ask my friend, Dan, who's an audio engineer, like, what do you think of this? You know, how does it sound? How does it measure? And for the cost you know, assuming you have to build it as well, um, because this one cost me about $300 on the nose. And um, I'm looking at, you know, if we make like five or six of them, it'll probably be, it might be 275, might be 325, you know, somewhere in there. Um, you know, if we're looking to do that, um, then, you know, is this worth it? Like, is it that good? And we both agreed, you know, from listening to it, spending some time outside listening to this thing that, yeah, I mean, this thing, for a wedge on a small stage, it's like this coaxial design works so well. Because if you think about it, if you're at a church and you've got a small stage, um, I run into this all the time. You get the musician and you point the monitor, you get it hitting their ear or getting close to that point, you know, coming down from the floor. And they really can only be in the sweet spot of the tweeter or the woofer, but not both, right? When you've got kind of a typical, um, like a 12 inch and a one inch um, kind of box, like a typical, you know, speaker on stick that you could also use as a monitor. Um, a lot of churches have these. It's really hard to get them in the sweet spot of both the tweeter and the woofer at the same time. And so um, something like this, where the, the tweeter is literally in the middle here, makes it so that they're always in the sweet spot. And it's small. You're able to get it very close to them so that um, it the sound doesn't have to travel as far. And when sound doesn't have to travel as far, you can turn it down, which is the ultimate goal. And they still get the same level and the same clarity. So Dan came over. We ran a bunch of stuff through it. He's the expert. I'm not in measuring. And this is what we ended up with in Smart Live. I mean, you can see coherence is quite good at the top here. And overall, it's a quite good trace. Um, you know, at the bottom here, this may be some of this may be caused by reflections in my carport, etc. Um, but um, but that's the phase, and then this side, as we can see, is the um, actual frequency response. And you know, he said, "Hey, look, you know, it's not flat, right? But we're not making a studio monitor here. So what we've got is really cool. You know, just looking at the monitor, where it slopes off below a hundred. That's great. You don't need that in a stage monitor because you've got subs spilling onto the stage." And then, you know, there's a little boost in the lower mids, a little cut after that. Um, something you might do in a monitor anyways, to be honest. You know, a little boost around here, which this is great for vocals to help them cut through. And, and then at the top a little bit. And so um, overall, you know, it looks really good. And so what's the what's the test drive? You know, what's my conclusion here? Um, this has been a really successful experiment. Like the musicians at church love it. 
Like they almost, they're not fighting over it because there's only one so far, but they're coming close to it in the sense that, um, you know, they notice the difference, which this is great. They can tell the difference very clearly between my wedge and the other wedges that we have. Um, there's one wedge that we have that's a JBL JRX series. That's like the nice wedge <laughs> and the rest of these community, these old, um, excuse me, D and D 12s. And there's a very audible difference to my ears. Um, one of my audio guys is also on the worship team. He noticed the same thing that it's very audible. It gets plenty loud for what we're doing. We're about, um, if we max out our chairs, we're about just under 200 seats or no, just under 300 seats. Um, I think we did 282 for a big uh, funeral a couple months ago, um, but or last summer. But um, so we're like 280 max. You know, the room is about 100 feet wide. It's 95 wide and 55 deep. Um, and we have live drums. And these things are able to get plenty loud on our stage, these wedges, and the musicians really love it. And so um, I'm going to plan to make more. On this post here, we're going to um, add in basically a list um, on the post that I'll link to below this video of everything I used to build it. Basically, not quite all the carpentry stuff necessarily, but I'll link to what I can. And I'll include that there so that you can see all the stuff added together. And if you're considering buying it, then you can totally do that. Um, the crossover, like I said, you'll have to get that from Michael Chua because um, he owns that, of course, but he's happy to give it out for non-commercial use, which is so awesome and so nice. So with that, guys, thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe here. And let me know below, are you considering building some of these? Have you built some? Um, and I will certainly give an update when we build them uh, in mass. We'll probably build five or six of them total, but I'm not sure when that's going to be because we've got a lot of projects at the church, a lot of things we're trying to make happen with AV. So I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks.